Bumbity dum bum bumbity dum. Woohoo! How's it going? What's up, mate? You can hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Nice. You on the was, balcony? I'm on the balcony. We're both outside. We're both getting fresh air today. You know, I was I was like, where should I set up shop today? And I normally go into the library or something, but literally every time that I've watched an interview, I'm always like, I wish people were outside. <laughs> I know, yeah. yeah. I, it felt right to me. I want to, you know, I've been inside uh, all morning. What time is it there? It's uh, 3.16. Yeah. Yeah, it's just noon here, you know. It feels right <laughs> to be outside right now. <laughs> so here we are, man. Here we are, yeah. Um, just a quick welcome to everyone that's in here. Um, man, you bring a lot of love into the room, David. <laughs> a lot of hearts, a yeah. lot of comments. Beautiful, a lot of energy. Um, just want to say hello to everyone that's hopped in this live. Um, Dave and I got a uh, exciting announce announcement to make um, about something that we've been working on. So we're going to be uh, making open for the public in a few weeks. Um, so we really appreciate y'all being here. Um, Dave, you got anything you want to say before we reveal? Um yeah, no, I'm I'm just very excited. Uh, I I'm yeah, I'm just very excited. And hello, everybody that's saying hello. And uh, yeah, let's let's just announce it. I don't know. I don't have anything else to add. <laughs> just, David and I are getting married. Getting married. <laughs> it's official. I'm so excited. Um, no, no, no. We're not. We're not getting married. Um, we've we've actually been married for the past couple of years. Um, yeah, it's old news. This is old news. This happened during the quarantine. Yeah. Um, what we are doing, though, is um, we're going to be teaching an acting for TV and film workshop. Um, and this is going to be in the month of February, the month of love. I see a lot of love in this chat. So any of you guys that are uh, new to acting or just interested in acting, um, <laughs> we're going to be sharing some information about how you can learn more about this workshop. Um, it's going to be a three week experience. All the sessions are going to be live and recorded. Dave and I are going to be talking about our experience as actors, um, getting onto the fosters, our respective individual journeys. Um, we're also going to be potentially doing some work within scenes from the show um, and some stories that are from some um, some episodes that you all may be familiar with, breaking those down and kind of giving you a perspective that maybe you didn't have. And uh, ultimately, we're just going to be trying to create a space where people that have an interest for acting, people that have a love for acting, this is not a joke, um, can come and um, explore this creative um, art form that we both love so much. So. If that's something y'all are interested in, I will be uh, posting the link for that. Um, it's, it's already in my bio, so if you want to check it out, you can go do that. And if uh, Dave, I'll send it to you so that you can post it in your bio so people have an easy way to access it. Um, all the information's in there. Um, yeah, so that's, that's really what, what we're on here to talk about. And um, I think... Uh, you know, we just we just wanted to get on this live to one kind of connect on this, you know, topic, but also uh, I'd say like really just give a, um, a a play by play like in process look of what we're gonna be doing and how we each like have our own different unique opinions about acting, how it informs our work, and how it's gonna shape what we're gonna do together. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, super, I'm super excited about this to reiterate, reiterate a little bit about what you're saying, Tom. Um, I'm just thinking about how you and I have have uh, have been talking for some time about story and and, uh, you know, character breakdowns and how much fun we have doing that. Um, so I'm kind of looking forward to turning outward a bit. And in my mind, it's almost like we just kind of continue doing what we're doing, but now people are listening to us. So, you know, and again, it's an, it's, it's an introduction 
to anyone who, you know, maybe uh, just intrigued by by the concept of acting or intrigued by storytelling or, or anything in that in that realm. So this is kind of a overview and 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 yeah, we're just excited to kind of it's it's gonna be very conversational, very um, much more of like a general view over it all. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. I'm very excited. So am I, man. Um, just to answer a question I've seen a couple of times, the workshop is going to cost money. It's uh, $99.99 for the three sessions. So you break that down, that's basically $33 for each session. Um, all that information is on the link if you're interested in learning more and joining. Uh, that being said, I haven't created the uh, event for this yet, though. But on top of the actual paid workshop, we're going to have a free uh, webinar one week before the workshop starts so that if you guys don't want to pay, um, you can't pay, whatever it may be, or if you just want to get a taste of what we're going to be doing uh, before we actually do it, um, that's something that's going to be available too. So just keep your eyes open, keep your ears to the ground. Um, like I said, the workshop event is created. I haven't created the webinar yet. So if you just go to the link in our bio, in uh, my bio, you'll see that and just be on the lookout for the event that I need to create for the webinar. So logistics, boring stuff, adult shit, um, all out of the way. I want to dive into to this element of story um, that we've been exploring pretty much since the like beginning of the I, well, we David and I this is what's crazy is that David and I have been exploring we realized recently that we've acted with each other in more things than any other actor. Like I've done more work with David than I've done with any other actor. And you guys have only seen the Fosters, but we've done numerous short films, a feature film that's in post-production, hopefully another feature film um, soon. So I see you really as like my creative storytelling uh, partner in arms. And um, when we started communicating during the the pandemic it was very clear to both of us that the stories that we were being shown had kind of run their course and it was like I, you were the first person to say it you were like these these stories feel uh, obsolete and outdated um mm -hmm. and it just got us going on this journey of just playing and exploring and what we continue to do um and it's probably what the workshop is a byproduct of of these new ways of telling stories that we actually may need to move through what we're going through, um, which is a very crazy period in human history. And so I just want to throw the question out there for you, David, like what is, what is story for you and how do you feel like story can be used as a, a tool for healing? Well, I've always been of the belief that everyone is creative, even if they're not in the creative field. And everyone has, they're all, everyone's in their own story, you know? So we just get the, you know, the luxury of being able to like, basically be a part of all sorts of different stories. So in my mind, there's really, it's, it's hard to live life without thinking of it as a story. Now, maybe, maybe that's just personal to me. Maybe, that, maybe I'm wired that way, but I think, I think a lot of people feel that way. I think a lot of people feel like they're, starring in their own movie that their friends and their family is the cast you know there there are plenty of ways to 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 look at that and, and break that down but i um i think story and the more stories you're exposed to the more books you read the more movies you watch there are parallels to what we go through day in day out and whether people know it or not but i think again i think people do know this you know it, it's a cathartic process to watch something you know, um, I forget who said it, but, you know, actors, their main job is really to feel things that other people don't want to feel. Sometimes you go to you pay you pay money to for a ticket at the theater to go watch someone express or go through something that you've gone through that, you know, it's 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 the relatability of it um, that I think is one of the the foundations of any good story is you, you putting your, yourself in the character's shoes. Um, so, you know, in a way, I think stories are like the oldest, most like primal thing that we have is as humans. Um, 
and you know i feel very lucky to to be able to kind of i want to to live that i want i that's all i that's all that really interests me um so story is like one of the most important things there is because I, I think it's one of the only true things that there is you know mm. yeah i was what, I was, what uh, about you well yeah i was gonna say i was reading a quote um in this book um uh, it's called like future sacred and it's all about how like the natural creativity that exists in nature can teach us a lot about life and um uh how we can come together more so collectively as humans but there was a quote in there about how you know um stories are not just how we make sense of the world it's how we connect to the world because without stories and i'm paraphrasing the world ceases to exist hmm. and it, it, it takes you back to um the origin stories that all mm -hmm. um uh, communities and ancient groups of people have Mm -hmm. um, and they're all different, but they're all kind of the same in the fact that they have one. Totally. Like there is an origin story in any community or culture that you engage with. And a lot of it starts with this, this big bang or uh, something coming from nothing. Ultimately, sure. like uh, bringing light or awareness to what was uh, dark and like not, not tangible. And even if we have no real idea of like what actually happened at the beginning of time per se, there is still that innate um, visceral understanding that there will always and continually be a nothing and a something. Right. Yeah. And it takes that effort of seeing the connection between the two. It takes the, skill of being the artist who can walk the high wire of the nothing and the something to relay that story to the community. Yeah. And so I remember hearing years ago, a friend of mine, Ian, uh, is another actor. He said, you know, storytelling is, it's a noble pursuit and how it can be very easy sometimes in Hollywood, especially for that to get completely overlooked and outweighed by uh, financial pursuit, uh, fame, um, what it can bring. And these are things that I have all been driven by. You know, these are partly reasons why I got into storytelling in the first place. But um, the book is called like Future Sacred. Just Google Future Sacred. I saw that comment in there. Future Sacred or Sacred Future. Um, but how COVID and everything that's happened over the last few years has kind of just like <laughs> disassembled that initial desire to engage with story and like brought me back to square one, the foundational reason for why we do the thing we do. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you know, the healing comes from the relating. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about story, I feel like it is, it is like one, something that should be taught um just across the board because uh, we're 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 not really taught how to learn per se hmm. but we we have to learn right and the ways in which we learn it could be a variety of ways but it's all through story and i feel like just one simple but potentially not easy solution for eradicating a lot of the um, pervasive anxiety and fear and self-judgment and self-doubt is to really kind of do what what we want to do in february which is like give a nice in-depth um concentrated experience of what story is and what storytelling is yeah and then that brings me to the next piece which is character you know it's like actors that's our job to play the characters in the story the writer writes the story the actor brings it to life mm -hmm. and um I, I i'd love to hear about how you feel you continually like what was the initial drive to uh, put yourself in what you described as sometimes uncomfortable positions for the sake of the story because another thing i think is that story is queen right. without the context of story we have nothing Right. You know, we have no societal understanding. We have no cultural connection. And as an actor, that's kind of that exists in a microcosm on set within the story. And so, like, how 
did you feel that pull to really engage with things that can be really blissful and joyous, but also really devastating and, uh, and grief stricken at times to, to share this form of, of relating and connection? Yeah, well, I think that's, um, those are, those are two different angles on it. The, uh, Cause I agree that um, the story usually is, is an obvious structure that, you know, especially when it's a, when it's a script and it's ready to be shot. That's, it's an obvious thing. I guess um, the uh, the pull or the, the the attraction to playing characters is to be able to explore different facets of like what it means to be human. I guess if you really want to zoom out, but um, and just and just being able to have fun with that and 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 really it goes it goes back to a, a kid sense of playing pretend and and all of those things for me. I think there's a lot of different ways to answer this. For me though, it's, it's, it's like the greatest game to play. And, and again, explore different, different facets of yourself, different facets of, or possibilities of what you can be in life. The discomfort is a more inward thing. And that, that comes from the exploration. Cause sometimes you, if you're lucky enough, you get to play a character that you're nothing like. And uh, when those things happen, or or there are maybe parts of the character that you're nothing like. I think there there's always a bit of you in every every character that um, an actor plays. But if you're lucky enough to explore something that's maybe unfamiliar to you, or um, something that you would never do yourself, or say yourself, or or think yourself, that's where the discomfort comes into play. And I guess I was always a fan of like being in those positions sort of like at the at the at the ledge and you you know you're not really sure if you should jump off but the job is to jump off and i just i've always been kind of addicted to that or i've really and and i've always taught myself or shown myself or proven to myself that you can learn the most when you feel like you don't know what to do and, you, you, and the, there's this weird sort of thing that opens up inside of you and you end up going to a new place in yourself. And, but you know, this, this kind of dips into a lot of different situational things and, and different characters. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, for me, ultimately characters are, are ways to learn about yourself um, from an outward perspective. I think it's the same goes for the audience. It goes back to the relatable relatability thing as well. And then I also think about, you know, like going back to that point of discomfort or, or playing people you're nothing like plenty of actors. I know, you know, this, I think it's like kind of a well-known thing. Plenty of actors say that the most fun roles to play are the villains. And, you know, it's, and I, I don't think that's because those actors feel like they're villains themselves. They tend to be the nicest people, but they have the most fun, you know, going out on the limb and playing these, you know, crazy or radical thinking people. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's that idea. It's, it's the idea of being able to stretch in ways that maybe life doesn't always allow you to. I mean, think about all the different situations that you're put in on, on set, you know, or the things that are asked of you or the skills that you have to learn for a job. These are all like sort of things that you most likely wouldn't be able to do in, in your real life. So I think there's also a, a thing about acting where it's, again, I think it's, it's all really exploration. I think it's, it, that's really what it comes down to. Exploration of the body, exploration of, of the mind, you know, everything. Yeah, you said something there. Thank you for sharing that, man. Yeah. Um, you said something there about, you know, the, some, a lot of actors, can speak to some of the best roles or the most fun they've had playing a role is when they're playing the villain right and i know that's been the case for me like i have played the villain a bunch in uh in in movies that i've done not not really tv um but i'd say most of the movies i've done i've been a villain or like a villain type character and um what it makes me think about is something that I actually want to touch on in the workshop when it comes to um, uh, character creation, but it's something an acting teacher 
uh, my, my first acting teacher in LA um, would say, she said, you get cast for your shadow. Hmm. Casting directors, and I've, I've yet to hear that. I never heard it before. Yeah. But she said, casting directors can see past your press release. They can see past your bullshit. They can see past what you want the world to think you are, and they can see your shadow. And that's what you get cast for. And I always thought that was really interesting, a bit concerning because the roles I was getting cast for were pretty, you know, uh, nasty people. But uh, <laughs> I was like, okay, what does that mean about my shadow? Right. That maybe I'm not shining light on. And again, that goes back to this whole concept, and this is a connection I made recently, um, of the nothing and the something, right? And how it takes that person to traverse the high wire to get the information from the nothing presentable in the something. And so then that makes me think, okay, I get that on like a macro story. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay. I mean, it's, it's a little loud right now, but you know, I'm sure it'll pass. <laughs> it's, it's hold for helicopter. It's coming right so over me. So let me let me ask you this while while that's while that's going on and, and there's something um, going on over there. Um, elaborate on shadow a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, elaborate yeah, on shadow yeah. because like are you talking like an essence? Are you talking sort of um, they can see past you and they can see your shadow? Does that mean uh, a dark? interior of yourself does that mean an essence of yourself what, what exactly do you mean by that i think it means uh and thank you for uh asking that clarifying question for me i think it means the unexplored parts of you yeah okay the okay. um the 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 um it's dark because we're just not aware of it right right and it's not and i think that was the thing that i was getting caught up in was oh does my shadow mean like my evil side? Does that right. mean that's my right. like my bad side? Like the all that stuff? It's like not necessarily, but because of the 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 society that we live in and the world that we live in, a lot of those things that are considered bad or dark or negative um do become perverse mm -hmm. um when they're hidden away. Sure. Yeah. Of like addictive behaviors, yeah. uh, maybe some darker thoughts, a lot of things that we all experience, but we're not. It's like if you express that a lot of the times, um, you either get shunned, you may get uh, punished, you may get hurt. Right. Um, so there's like uh, extreme social consequences to expressing the unexplored part of yourself. And eventually, as we get older, it becomes the shadow that's always sure. there. So it's kind of like the subconscious, right? And right. so I feel like to your point about everything being exploration and like that moment before you jump off the ledge and you're like, do I want to jump off the ledge? Is it the best thing? Let's fucking do it. It's, right. it's really like can be the scariest thing because oftentimes when we're really utilizing uh, acting and storytelling, for our growth and self-exploration, it is diving into those parts of ourselves that we are completely unfamiliar with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it may feel yeah. like there's there's no place to land. Right, which goes and hand then, in hand with it goes hand in sorry no it goes hand in hand with what I was saying about self exploration, which is I think why this is attractive in the first place to to people who want to get involved or people who are interested in getting involved. Acting to me is just exploring yourself, exploring what people can be so so sorry to cut you off i just wanted to make that tie because it's it's you know we're we're kind of we're saying the same thing from two different angles i just find that interesting exactly that's yeah. that, that was the bridge that was the bridge yeah. um and i feel like it it can be very um exhilarating and very healing um if done consciously mm -hmm. you know um i, I want to just jump a little into this uh, next kind of topic question um, of, because I think this is like something that I really had to get conscious of. And I know you're working through it yourself in your own way. 
now and like we've both been over the past couple of years is like when COVID happened, and for me it was a little bit before COVID, everything came to a grinding halt. Yeah. And all the stuff that we kind of took for granted or um, we just did out of rote and like repetition, um, we didn't have those those um, activities or those people to like rely on and depend on anymore to relate with ultimately. Mm -hmm. And it really forced me to examine my relationship with storytelling and the characters that I was playing as an actor. Yeah. Because what I found was that I was using the experience of jumping off the ledge ultimately as a way of escaping doing that real explorative uh, excavating work within myself. Hmm. And so that got me thinking, okay, well, you know, if storytelling is how we learn and I'm always playing a character in this story, our relationships, basically the container or the classroom through which we learn in which we learn, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I immediately think of that quote that, you know, uh, the people you surround yourself are mirrors to yourself, you know, and, and that goes, that goes beyond the acting realm. So I think, you know, and again, I think it depends on a lot of different factors, upbringing and what whatnot. But I know I've learned a lot from the people I keep around. You know, so I think I think that is true. You know, I think it's huge. Yeah, I, I think it's it's one of the biggest things, and I I like it. That realization actually caused me to take a step back from acting because my relationship to acting was codependent on ah. the escape that it gave me. It was uh, codependent on the dopamine rush that I got, that I still get when I get an email, much fewer now, from yeah. my manager with an appointment. Yeah. Oh my God, here's an opportunity, right? And because I allowed myself to take that time, I was able to shift my perspective on the relationship that I love, you know? but what it was had to die for it to become what it is. Yeah. And the way it was wouldn't have allowed me to just sit down and have a conversation with you like this about this thing that we both um, love uh, together. Right. And I guess where I'm, where I'm getting at with this is like when it comes to storytelling and like specifically um, acting on film and TV, because there are a lot of like moving puzzle pieces always at play allowing ourselves the opportunities to get really clear on why we're doing this like truly why are we doing this in the first place it can save a lot of heartbreak it can save a lot of confusion and it can really um create a more stable foundation for mental health because that was the other thing that i saw during the pandemic was thankfully i didn't see it in a large scale, but I saw it enough times and I experienced it to know that it was real, which is that if that intention for getting into the relationship with storytelling um, wasn't clear to begin with, the chance for like a decline in mental health was really high. Completely. 100%. Yeah. I and, mean, I, no, go sorry. on. No, okay, go I'll on. just, last thing I just want to say was like, as, as an artist, as an actor, as someone that has like been fortunate enough to earn a living doing this thing at a high level, like in a very visible way, I can attest to the story, the draw, the appeal of the tortured artist, of um, the struggling artist, of the, the man or the woman that is really not made for society. And because of that flaw or whatever, we get to, that's our burden to, to, to um, carry in, in how we tell our stories and all that. And I just think that's complete bullshit. I think it's outdated. I think it's very unhealthy. I think it's unfortunately led to a lot of people um, ending their lives um, unnecessarily. And I ultimately think that there is a really healthy, beautiful, um, regenerative way of uh, being an actor, being a storyteller, engaging with Hollywood, Broadway, whatever it is, um, so that we don't succumb to those vices or um, a lot of those pitfalls that a lot of people who we look up to and even know, unfortunately, have. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I 100% agree. I think there are a few different ways you can look at the last few years, beginning with, with 2020. Um, and it was, I think, an introspective sort of challenge to, to take or look at where your life has been going thus far. And, and you know, the way I was, the way I've noticed it, it, it tends, it seemed to have been bro broken down into two different outlets or, or outcomes rather. One was people either chose to double down on what they were pursuing. The other was they completely pivoted and went a completely different new direction in their life. I've known both to, to be true over and over again. So I find that kind of an interesting thing, you know. Um, Can I say something to that real quick? Because sure. I feel like there's a third option. I'm gonna okay. be quick. It's that people pivoted within the doubling down. So ah. people doubled down on the thing that they were already doing, but right. they were able to pivot within. Sure. Yeah. No. Actually, that's that's completely true. Yeah. That's completely because I would say I'm probably more along those lines than just pure doubling down. Yeah. Me we too, both right. are. We both are. So yeah, you're right. You're right. There is a third option within that. So yeah, you know, it, I think, and with that, I think that's great. I think, I think it can be very hard because it kind of challenges you to maybe second guess or reassess everything you've done. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that's a bad thing either. You know, yeah. I think um, there was a structure in place before COVID with acting, where you felt the need to strike while the iron's hot. Um, climb this ladder of success right. and never go down, always go up. And it was like this linear idea of, of success. And um, if at some point you felt like you were going down as opposed to up, that was very hard. That was very hard to deal with. And um, there's all the comparisons and there's all the, not competition necessarily, like sports but there's a weird other form of competition or comparison that that yeah. can exist whether you like it or not whether you believe that it can exist or not i think it does exist and uh or existed more so and i think all of those structures kind of broke down um and it really caused people to 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 kind of reassess you know yeah. um for for me it caused me to zoom out you know, we uh, acting is, I think, for both of us has been our first and foremost kind of choice of profession and what we have logged the most hours doing. But I know we agree on story based on conversations we've had before, which is which will um, inevitably go hand in hand with what we talk about in our workshops. But um, that was my that was my pivot and double down was I was already doing story but I had to sort of zoom out a bit and not just look at myself as an actor, but someone who just wanted to be involved in, in good storytelling um, to whatever degree that's, that's required of me. Um, and I think that's, that's a better health to, to your point about healthy, sort of the mental health aspect. I think that's where people should be if they're in, if they're interested at all, in in story or acting or whatever that is you know you need to know the messages that you're um trying to get out there within the story you need to know what these characters really are what you know what they're representing whether they're representing a community whether they're representing what not to do what to do if they're a hero if they're a villain that was something to, to back to fosters i think that we did really well in that show which was we represented communities very, very well. well. We very well. we sort of wove in a lot of different topics and and relevant conversations that were going on at the time. Some of them are still going on, and gave voice to a lot of communities that otherwise didn't have a voice at that point in time. You know, I think things that continue to evolve, and there's a lot of other types of shows out there that are sort of picking up what we put down. But that was something that was always that felt good, you know, showing up every day on that set or to those table reads was you know the messages that we were putting out there. And so all these years later, I just think that that's more important than ever. Not that it was ever not important, obviously, but in my in my perspective, I think 
you really have to be in love with with getting messages out there and they can be as fictional and as out there as, as you want them to be. They don't have to be these naturalists sort of rooted in reality things all the time. They can be purely metaphorical or mythological and still make sense or, or still parallel it perfectly, you know, and that's, that's the beauty of, of, of story, you know? Um, but that's, you know, just going back to the workshop and what we're about to do. I think that's something that I would like to dive in myself is, all the different types of stories that can exist, the messages that can be injected in them, and uh, from those stories, the types of characters that exist, you know. Um, and we're going to use material from the Fosters to kind of make that point, um, you know, just to tie it all back to what we're trying to do here. Um, and and yeah, I just think you know, I, I I'm. It just feels nice because I feel like you and I have these conversations behind closed behind closed doors a lot. We we definitely did over COVID and and beyond, and you know, have been playing a lot with different stories with a lot of different great people. And you know, I'm excited to see who out there wants to who who out there feels the same way and maybe doesn't feel like they necessarily know how to get involved. I, I, I feel like I've been seeing a few comments while we've been talking about how to get involved or whatever. This is a good way to get involved, you know, uh, join the workshop and, and, and we're, we'll have fun and we'll, you know, kind of play together. That's, I think that's like the, the, the most pure, um, you know, stripped down kind of essence of what we're trying to accomplish here. And again, it's an introduction, so it's not going to, we hope, we hope, you know, our intention is not to convolute it too much with, right. with our conversations. But I think it's going to be a nice little, op hopefully, hopefully. My, my, my hope is that we can open some doors um, in people's minds um, to what it really is about as opposed to just, um, you know, the, the attention that something gets or you know, the, the viral, the viral weight of it uh, or the trending weight of it, you know, stories that are, that, that exist throughout that keep getting told in different ways. You know, I've been reading a lot of Joseph Campbell lately and mm -hmm. something, one of the biggest things that he brings up is that everyone lives their own mythology and the mythology is a through line through everything that is human. It's a, it's one of the, the sources of, of, existence based of, of life you know and one of the best things you can do in your life is figure out the mythology that you're living you know which which is just you know essentially what we're talking about just another way of putting it but it's been fresh in my mind so i felt i felt the need to say that but you know it's yeah i just think it's um and even if you're not necessarily in the creative field i still think it's worth exploring within yourself i still think it gives you relevance and perspective on whatever you're trying to accomplish you know sorry i went on a tangent there and i kind of touched on a lot of things i wanted to tie back to the workshop a bit and but uh save me tom save me you were in flow you were in flow man no no yeah. not in need of saving um so thank you for that that offering um we're gonna close up shop here but um i saw a comment about um where the workshop is happening um, once again, if you just go to the link in my bio, um, you'll be able to click on the, um, the workshop and see how to join. Um, it's going to be in the Breathe, Rise and Thrive studio. So we have a virtual studio and community that you'll just become a part of. And that's where the event is going to take place. It's going to be happening on Zoom, but it's going to be happening through and in the studio. So just click the link in that bio to learn more and uh, sign up. Um, last thing I want to say about what you just said, D, uh, just tying it all together is, uh, how I feel like, and I've thought about this often, you know, like the Fosters has been to date my, my biggest job and my biggest acting opportunity, uh, in terms of like it being visible to the world. And, um, that's a whole nother topic of conversation about like the value of something based on its visibility versus like what it actually does for you internally. But we won't get go down that, that road right now. But um, right. what I, what I always love about that fact 
is that that show was about family and it was about safety, mm -hmm. love and community. And mm -hmm. especially for uh, communities and individuals who may not feel safe within their communal or cultural container. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that's ultimately what we're trying to do. It's, it's like you said, play together. Mm -hmm. So everyone that uh, is interested in joining this workshop know that our intention is to create a safe container for you to be able to express and explore the mythology of yourself, the story of yourself, so that it doesn't feel like a burden, so it doesn't feel like a guilt trip, so that it can be freeing and empowering and supportive and clarifying and helping you make decisions of where you want to go next. That's ultimately our end goal. Like if we're using the instrument of acting to uh, relay that message, but that's ultimately our um, end goal and intention. Um, so really excited to be able to do that. Um, I don't have anything else that I want to say today. Um, David and I are going to be doing these conversations with a few other people over the next couple of weeks. So be on the lookout for those. Um, we've got a bunch of really cool friends that are actors, storytellers in their own right um, uh, that may not be actors. And that's the other thing. Actually, I did have one more thing to say, which is um, everyone is a story. And that means everyone's a storyteller. Yeah. yeah. And that means everyone is essentially creative. Yeah. And as one of those people that used to feel that I weren't, they weren't creative because they couldn't draw. <laughs> right. Or like do clay or whatever. Um, I just want to say that to everyone out there, myself from 25 years ago, that because you are alive, you are a storyteller. And because you are a storyteller, you are inherently creative. Right. right. So let's continue to create some experiences and some conversations that can move us forward um together like you said let, let's come together let's play together um i have a lot more that i could say yeah no we but, i'm uh, sure we, we could go on and I, I just wanted to say this will be this will be able to be played back yes this is being recorded this is being recorded and right. the workshops yes. will also be recorded so if uh you can't attend the workshops live you'll have access to them afterwards. But yes, this will be recorded. David and I will do another one of these in a couple of weeks before we mm -hmm. kick off the workshop. Um, and like I said, between now and then, we're also gonna be doing different conversations with different people um, that are different storytellers in their own right. They're not all actors. Yep. Um, some are directors, some are writers, um, trying to get some other folks involved so that we can really feel that collective storytelling essence and move into this workshop with a lot of momentum, a lot of energy, and a lot of diversity of thought. Yep. Yeah, so I just, I saw some comments asking what we were talking about, and it was just people joining in as they do, or when they did. So for those wondering what we are talking about, this will be recorded. You can watch the full thing back, and, and hopefully that makes more sense. And then going forward, it will be the same way. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you for that. Last thing I want to say, I saw a little comment in there. Can you both say it's not where you've come from, it's where you're going? Because I no. know that's part of the song, right? The theme song? Yeah. It's, well, it's not where you come from, it's where you belong. It's, it's where it's, you belong. Yeah. I, I just want to challenge that because I think it's both. Yeah. Because I think you belong where you come from, yeah. and you belong where you are, and you belong where you're going. Yeah. And I think this is exactly what we were talking about, about like using acting as a way of releasing the pain or the burden of where we came from, mm -hmm. of the past. Um, it could have been communal rejection. It could have been um, self-hate within. It could have been a lot of different things. It could have been all of the above. That's still a part of the journey. And we do a huge disservice to ourselves when we leave that behind instead of acknowledging the fact, oh, this happened for a reason, and this reason is why I'm exactly where I belong. Right, right. And it's all, it's like, like you said, before the pandemic, there was a very linear way of thinking and doing mm -hmm. things. This is all cyclical. Yes. This is all round and around, just like a, um, a shell on the beach, you know? So <laughs> um, just wanted to drop that in. And uh, 
I just want to say I love you all, everyone that's uh, that's been on here. Um, hi to Brazil, everyone that's going to come to the workshop, um, everyone that's going to come to the webinar, whatever it may be. I love you all. Thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm going to save this video. Peace. Love you, Dave. Love you guys. Love you, everyone. Love you, Tommy. And yes, we'll talk soon. Um, thank you for everyone who, who joined in today and uh, more to come. Peace. Bye-bye.